everyone, welcome back to my channel. And now, let's talk about the audiovisual aids. Module 2, Lesson 4, Audiovisual Aids. Created by Rachel Me All Dime. What are the visual aids? According to Kender, audiovisual aids are any device which can be used to make the learning more effective, more concrete, more realistic, and more dynamic. Objectives of using audiovisual aids First is to increase the effectiveness of teaching. Second, to hold the attention span of the learner for the duration of instruction and to save time. Our vision. Did you know that there is 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, and there is higher levels of retention can be achieved through active involvement in learning. By the way, audiovisual aids or AV aids are those devices which are used in classrooms to encourage teaching learning process and make it easier and interesting. Audiovisual aids are the best tool for making teaching effective and best dissemination of knowledge. And let us now proceed to the definition. The definition of audiovisual aids are those sensory objects or image which initiate or stimulate and reinforce learning. Visual aids are an instructional device that can be heard but not seen. Audio aids are an instructional device that can be heard but not seen. So now, let us proceed to the educational significance of teaching aids. First, use of all sense organs. Based on maxims of teaching, helpful and growing attention, a good motivating force, a good substitute for direct experience, provide clarity in subject matter, helps in fixing up new learning, met the individual difference requirements, facilitates great comprehension and retention of objects, encourages healthy classroom interaction, helps in positive transfer of learning, solve the problem of verbal listen, produces meaningless words, quicken the face of learning, and lastly, overcome possible hurdles during teaching. So those are the educational significance of teaching aids. And now, let's proceed to the characteristic teaching. And these are the advantages. Number one, accurate. Number two, simple and cheap. Three, motivate the learners. Four, meaningful the purposeful. Five, improvise. Six, large in size. Seven, comprehensibility. Eight, interesting. Nine, cost effective. Ten, availability. Eleven, transportability. Twelve, appropriateness. And thirteen, is relevance. In audiovisual aids, there are problems or limitations that can be used. So, problems and limitations in the use of audiovisual aids. Apathy of teachers and difference of students, financial problems, absence of infrastructure, language barriers, do not replace the teacher, letters and symbols are eligible, Colors are misused. Apathy of teachers. Man rather inertial when it comes to accepting change. 
a vast majority of teachers still prefer to use chalk talk method through which is a right thought. Hence, they are generally changed the resistance. And now let us proceed to the indifference of students. So as can you see, there are students that are indifferent um, kind. So the judicious of teaching aids will arouse interest, but sometimes it could enhance boredom and indifference at times. Financial problems. We all know that financial problems are the primary problems of what we are facing right now as of the moment. So the one-time investment in this age is costly and may not be affordable by all schools. Next is absence of infrastructure. So lack of basic facilities, classroom, electricity, projectors, chart stands, laboratory rooms, and etc. Language barriers. Most software is in English. Films, CD, audio cassettes, hence not suitable to regional medium schools. For now, let us proceed to classification of audiovisual aids. There is traditional type of classification, classification based on type of projection, classification based on motion, Classification based on dimensions of object, teaching aids based on size of media, teaching aids based on the numbers of sense organs used. Here we go, the traditional type of classification. First is audio aids, and these are the examples. Mic, radio, tape recorder, CDs, microphones, dexaphone, megaphone, gramophone, headphone, chalkboard, bulletin board, chart, drawings, posters, pictures, Exhibits, flashcards, flannel boards, illustrated board, album, scrapbook, magnetic board, maps, graphs, OHP, magic lantern, models. There are also photographs, a pedioscope, slides, and silent films. And those are the examples of visual aids. And now, let us proceed to the audiovisual aids. And the examples are lecture, demonstrations, televisions, films, computers, Videotapes, VCDs, DVDs, and LCDs. And those are examples of audiovisual aids in traditional type of classification. And now let's explore the base on type of projection. So project aids, projecting visuals into the screen. The kinds of these are silent motion pictures, film strips, magic lanterns, micro projection, slide projection, opaque and overhead projector. So when there is projecting aids, there are also in non projective aids and these are they different types of boards 
display material, photographs, posters, maps, and graphs, charts, models, spacemans, books, and illustrations. Let's proceed to the base of motion or movement. And these are the static aids and dynamic aids. Static aids are those in classroom teaching which do not move. And the examples of these are charts, flashcards, and OHP that can be seen in the images. Next is dynamic aids. Those aids in which individuals are parts which are capable of being made to move by mechanical principles. The examples given are motion pictures, television, and computers. And now, let's move forward to the base and dimensions of objects, and it is divided into two parts. Two and three dimensional aids. And this aids, only two dimensions, which is width and height, are only visible. Examples are charts, graphs, maps pictographs, and boards of different types. 3D aids. In this aids, all the three dimensions of length, breadth, and height are visible. The examples of these are models, globes, objects, mock-ups, specimens, and puppets. And these examples are we have seen on the recently pictures that I have already given. So let's proceed the base and size of media and there are two types. First is big media, computer and television. Second, little media. So it includes radio, film, strip, graphics, and audio cassettes. Let's move forward to the base on the number of sense organs used, and there is also two types. First is unimodal. Unimodal is those in which only one type of sense is either sight or auditory are used. Next is bimodal, is those in which both the sense organs visual and auditory are used. So they could be classified as electronic or non-electronic. So in non-electric, the examples are books, handouts, chalk and board, mannequins, models, and flip charts. So on the right side, in electric, the examples are overhead projector, slide projector, and computer. So, in audiovisual aids, there are steps that are needed to be followed. First is planning, second is preparation, third is presentation, and fourth is evaluation. In planning, you should know clearly the objectives of the presentation. Plan well in advance, anticipate the size of audience, think about the quality of material to be used, appropriateness to the subject. Let's proceed to preparation. You should select the convenient and comfortable place seating arrangement must be suitable. Make sure that all equipment are in working order before presentation. Prepare by rehearsing to make smooth presentation. And let's proceed to the presentation. First, you should motivate the audience and stress key points they observe during the presentation. 
present aids at right moment in a proper sequence. Display only one aid at a time. Remove all unrelated materials. Stand beside the aid, not in front of it. Evaluation By providing discussion and feedback to evaluate the effectiveness of audiovisual aids and the lecturer. So there are principles given. First is principles of collection. Second is principles of preparation. Third is principles of physical control. Four is proper presentation. Five is principle of response. And six is principle of evaluation. So in audiovisual aids, there are tips also that are given. Number one, select the correct aid. Number two, prepare prior to instruction. Number three, be familiar with the equipment. Number four, know how to use the aid. Number five, make sure all students can see and hear the aid. Six, check for effect on the class. Seven, practice using different types of aids. Eight, be flexible. Nine, select an audiovisual aid that is appropriate for teaching the training. Ten, objective. And that's all. Thank you. I hope you have learned something about this blog. See you soon. Bye. Thank you for watching.